Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Janus, creator of Pinar Tech Dad. Today, we're going to be doing the full review of the Asus ROG G14. And I know a lot of you are excited about this laptop because this is a very unique and kind of brand new experience when it comes to gaming laptops. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why this is exactly a great laptop. If you haven't activated your Windows 10 Pro license yet, make sure to check out VIPSCBKey.com where you can find affordable Windows 10 Pro keys. Use my code SKPV to get 80% off of your purchase. After purchasing the activation keys, you simply copy and paste it to your Windows activation panel and you're good to go. You also find keys for Steam, PSN, and Xbox, among other gaming keys on VIP-SCDKey.com. And if you haven't seen my quick unboxing and initial impressions on this, make sure to click the link up on the right corner. And I think it's very important for you guys to see that video first because I do share kind of a different opinion of the G14. All right, so first off, here are its specs. So as you've seen, we have the top of the line variant of the G14 here, which is equipped with a Ryzen 9 4900HS and an RTX 2060 Max-Q GPU. Now moving on to the ports on this, we do have the power input, HDMI port, a USB Type-C, which also doubles as a display port and a headphone and microphone combo jack. And then on the right side, we have another USB Type-C port, and then two extra USB-A ports as well and the Kensington lock. By the way, if you find the ports on the G14 lacking, I actually recommend using this USB hub from Ugreen. This is something that I've been using for several months now. It actually feels really premium and kudos to Ugreen for this. I'll leave the links in the description box so we can get this. Now, if you don't know yet, the G14 heats up really quick when you start gaming on this. That's not an issue of the cooling system, but rather the boost feature of the AMD Ryzen chip that it's equipped with. So the thing is the boost is always turned on. The fix on this is just to go to the registry key and then you turn off that feature. Unfortunately, Asus doesn't have a profile for this, so you really have to do this manually. And I must warn you that this fix is not an official Asus fix. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to fix this. So let's go ahead and open the registry key. The first thing that you need to find is the folder H key local machines. Next, you have to click the system folder. Then after that, go to the current control set. Next, control, power, then power settings. And then you have to find the folder that says 54533251. And then move on to the next folder, which begins with BE337238 and that should be it. That's the main folder that you should be looking at. And then you'll find a file on the right side on the right table which says attributes. Double click that and then change the value data. It's at default one and then change that to two. And then you just have to go to power plan. So edit the power plan, open that up and then go to change advanced settings. And then once you're there, look for the option where it says processor power management and then go to processor performance boost it's gonna say that it's set to aggressive you have to change that so basically just put it on disable you'll instantly notice that your temperatures on the cpu are gonna go way lower than the usual temperatures when you play games. I'm quite particular with this because before this fix, I was getting around 100 degrees Celsius when playing games. And you have to take note that the processor can only take up to 105 degrees. That's the max temperature that it can get. That's why this fix is a really great fix because once you put this, I always hover around 75 to 80 plus degrees Celsius, but I never reach 100 degrees Celsius after doing this fix which is really awesome with my initial impressions i did feel that the keyboard area was getting a little warm actually it was getting really warm not just a little warm now i have to say that 
the keyboard area still gets really warm. So I would highly recommend if you want to game on this for prolonged hours, I would suggest you get a standalone keyboard. By the way, when it comes to heating issues, I can highly recommend using this laptop stand from Rinke in order to help with a better airflow for your G14. After doing that fix, I'm now more confident in recommending the Zephyrus G14, especially for gamers who are always on the go, who want mobility for their gaming experience. This is a really great form factor for a gaming laptop. I never would have imagined something like this coming out. I've always believed that 15 inch and bigger are the only way to play on a laptop but the g14 has definitely changed my outlook on that so yeah that's basically the heating issue resolved in a nutshell well we've been talking about it extensively but i think that's the most important thing to remember about the zephyrus g14 when it comes to performance you really can't ask much more about the zephyrus g14 because the amd ryzen 9 4900 hs on this is such a powerful processor you'll be able to run any of your productivity programs premiere pro 3d rendering photoshop all of the common productivity programs will run smoothly on this all right, next, let's talk about the display on the Zephyrus G14. Now, it does have a 120 hertz display, but it's not as good as the 240 hertz display on the G15. I still much prefer the G15 over the G14 when it comes to display quality and the colors are more accurate on the G15. But it doesn't mean that the G14 has a bad display. It's just not as good as the G15's display. It has a 97% sRGB, not 100%, but it gets close. So you can definitely still use this for color accurate work. So I've been using this for editing videos and I've had no problems color correcting on this. Even though it does have a smaller screen compared to most gaming laptops, you'll still find yourself enjoying watching videos on this, especially watching movies on Netflix, watching YouTube videos, or whatever other media sources that you love watching. Now, the one thing that most gamers might find unsatisfying with this is the response time on this. It has a 14 millisecond response time. So for hardcore gamers who can see that small difference when it comes to response time, you really need to put that into consideration if you're choosing the G14. But for casual gamers, that's not going to be a problem. You won't be able to notice that much of a difference when it comes to response time. Now, as for the speakers and the sound quality, it's really good, but I find that its volume is kind of lacking. It's not as powerful when it comes to the volume. So here's a quick sample from the speakers. Now we'll skip the unboxing on this because you only get the case, the charger, and the earphones in one package. So there's not much of an unboxing experience here. Let me show you the specs on this first. Here are the specs. Next, let's talk about the keyboard in this. This one is a little bit mind boggling for me because the G14 is not a cheap laptop, but I'm really perplexed as to why this has a uniformity issue when it comes to backlighting on the keyboard. As you can see here, these are close up shots. You can see that some of the keys are not well lit. I guess this is the only thing that I would complain about the G14, which is not much of a complaint anyway. It's still backlit, but it's not the best backlit keyboard out there. Typing feels okay on this. It's very tactile. It's not that mushy. It's a very usable keyboard. It does kind of look like the keys that you'll find on a Zenbook. Now the trackpad, the trackpad I really like. It's very responsive. All of the Windows 10 gestures worked perfectly here. So it's really something that I would enjoy using if I don't have a separate mouse with me. Now the top variant for the G14 comes with a free webcam. Take note that I'm talking about the Philippine variant. I'm not sure about the global variant or the ones in the United States or other parts of the world because the G14 itself doesn't have a webcam, which is a bummer because it portrays itself to be a gaming and productivity laptop, which means you might be using this for online schooling, for meetings. So I really wish that they just included a tiny webcam right there. It doesn't matter if it's a 720p webcam, you know, just something that you can use in emergency cases so this is the quality that you'll get with the web camera that's included with the g14 the highest variant of course now if you turn off the light this is what it looked like so i guess if you want to do proper zoom meetings or skype calls you gotta have proper lighting of course anyway that's gonna be it for this short video about this web camera that's included 
with the Zephyrus G14. Now as for gaming, oh my god, guys, you'll have a great time playing games on this. I was able to play a lot of Dota 2, Nino Kuni 2, Monster Hunter World, and I also got to test the new Horizon Zero Dawn game on the PC, which of course is an old game on the PS4. But yeah, it ran perfectly on the G14. I had no issues whatsoever. Now my memory isn't very good when it comes to remembering the frame rates of each game. That's why I'm gonna leave you with gameplay footage of each game that I mentioned so that you guys can see the frame rates, the actual frame rates, and take note all of these games are set to the maximum graphical settings. remaining. You didn't see that coming. So if you unplug this from the power port, you'll get around 12 to 13 hours of battery life on this, which is absolutely crazy. Bear in mind that that 12 hours to 13 hours does not include gaming. Because if you game while on battery life, it's gonna eat a chunk, a huge chunk of your battery life. So I really wouldn't advise using this for gaming when you're on battery. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot talking about the animatrix in this. This is a very fun feature on the Zephyrus G14. Now, practicality wise, this doesn't do much for you. You know, it's not something that I'm gonna be using if I'm on battery life, but it's something that I would use just for the sake of it because it's fun, like the way I'm using it right now. Thumbs up for Asus for thinking out of the box with this crazy idea. All right, so what do you guys think about the Zephyrus G14? Will it be something that you would buy for yourself? For me, the Zephyrus G14 is something that we didn't think we needed. But once I started using this laptop, I thought to myself, wow, a 14 inch gaming laptop, that hasn't been heard of. And I must say that Asus really did a great job in this 14 inch laptop. Granted that you have heating issues on this initially, but it's something that you can easily fix with a registry key fix. For me personally, it's almost a perfect laptop that I can highly recommend to my gamer friends, to my business oriented friends. You can play on this and then you can work on this as well. At the end of the day, which one should you get? The G14 or the G15? Now, the answer to that is it really depends. Do you want a small gaming laptop that you can bring anywhere you go with portability in mind, with mobility in mind? If the answer is yes, then you should go with the Zephyrus G14. Now, if you wanna have a smoother gaming experience when it comes to the display, a more color accurate display, a bigger display, then of course, the Zephyrus G15 is the easy recommendation here. So yeah, at the end of the day, the form factor is what you'll have to consider because power wise, this can stand toe to toe against the G15. And before we end this video, here are the suggested retail prices for the Philippine market. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, you know the drill, please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell button so you can watch more videos like this in the future. That's it for today, guys. Keep safe and have a great day.